So this is going to be a quick video. This is an extension of the previous more in-depth V2 embeddings video. And so the original sample that I showed was kind of how to do everything with large amounts of Markdown files. So if you wanted to do embeddings of Markdown's file, do search based on those Markdown files, and then be able to take the results of that search and provide context to completion calls for a chatbot that didn't need to be fine-tuned. That was kind of what the previous set of videos was on. I did, however, when I was walking through this, mention that, well, this is for Markdown, but you could fairly easily modify this code and change it to kind of anything that could be opened in Notepad, like an HTML file, like a text file. This will work with. After I posted the video, someone from the community yesterday reached out and said, well, how do you make this work with DocX? And so as it is right now, it, it's not going to work with DocX, but it took me about 15 minutes to at least get a working prototype up that would add DocX support to this. So I wanted to quick walk through and show you how to do that sort of thing with modifying this code a little bit. So the first thing I looked around for was just, I wanted a way to convert a DocX file into a text file first. And so there is PyPan doc, seemed like a pretty good project that puts a wrapper around the, the Pandoc project and then has the ability to, we'll quick go to this site to show you. So there are two different ways of installing. You can do pip install PyPandoc, in which case you can point it to your own installation of Pandoc. I've never used Pandoc before. This has everything all inclusive. So this is what I ended up using uh, for my environment. Once you have it installed, I then kind of take what is, you'll recognize a lot of the same elements uh, from this code originally, but this first section is just going to go and go to a directory and make a bunch of text files. Now I've run this already, so I'm gonna go back through and delete these text files. So I've got two different folders set up. I have one that's called all docs, which has everything in one place. So I'm gonna remove all my converted text files that I already created, just so you can see. And then I have another one where I've got some of these underneath another folder. So just to kind of show and make sure that it could handle if we didn't have all the files in the same place and we wanted to just be able to go and find all the docx files. So we'll go and quick delete these. And so what I did find is it seems like uh, PyPandoc or Pandoc itself is not necessarily super resilient. So we'll see, first we'll run it for the all docs right here. All right, took about a second. And you can see we now have copies of all our docs that are converted to text files. I'm going to run it as well on the folder that has things nested. So if we look in here, some of them are at the base, some of them are in these subfolders. What I found was it seems to, and I've spent very little time with um, PyPandoc, so I don't really want to blame them. I'm sure it's something I'm doing. But when I point it to this folder, I do get an error message, but it seems to still process everything the way I want it to. So it throws this error, tells me that Pandoc died. But if I go to that folder, I can see I now have all the text files that I wanted created. So it seems like in either case it works. Certainly if I had more time, I'd go and investigate this error and figure out why it's getting unhappy. But for now, in either case, it's gonna work. So now what we need to do, so we now have text files that we can work with. And I've taken the code from the last time before we were removing the metadata as part of this process of getting everything ready for pandas to put in a data frame. I'm going to get rid of this code. I'm going to change this to be looking for text files. I can remove these if statements that were related uh, to this search code for the metadata. So what we end up with is this here. And so it's a little bit simpler, a little bit easier, but we'll run it real quick. And then we can generate a data frame that's based on those text files. And so now we can run through and do everything we did in the last video. So we'll normalize this text, clean it up, remove new lines, anything like that. Some of these like this was more for Markdown specific because I expected a bunch of those characters, but we'll run it anyway. We can quick go and tokenize this initially. So we'll take this column of content that actually has the text and we'll tokenize it with the new tick token from 
we have a new library from OpenAI tick token that we can use that has a lovely 8191 max input tokens um, compared to before if you're using the hugging face transformers library you're limited to 2046 so we will run this and do tokenize and there we are going to quick check what this will cost it should be fairly inexpensive so yeah we're going to use the new a to v2 very very cheap to run certainly before the davinci v1 it would have been a little bit more expensive We'll generate the embeddings and can make some large floating point numbers, vectors that we can use to be able to search. We'll pull back that data frame. All right, there's our embeddings for all these. So now we can do a search question as we did before. So we're going to search with cosine similarity. And let me run that. And so with this, these are kind of the questions that I was asking in the last video won't apply because the, a lot of these are little snippets of different computer programming books. I am going to ask it about the dangers of basic because I know one of these has some strong opinions on the basic programming language. And we'll look at the result really quick. So it's saying this one, which is the one I expected it to bring back. So this is the uh, Turing Award winner um, known for the Dijkstra's algorithm had some very strong opinions about different programming languages. And so if you've never read this article, it has some choice words for COBOL. It has some choice words for Fortran, some equally unhappiness regarding basic, uh, but we'll go through and now we'll change. We'll, we'll do a question again. This time we're going to couple it with text DaVinci. So rather than just pulling back all of the text, we're going to provide this as context to the text DaVinci 003 model. So let's run this and we'll ask it about the dangers of basic. It's going to think for a little bit. And so it has some very strong opinions on the dangers of the basic programming language. I have to confess, basic was the first programming language that I learned. I'm very fond of it. I think it was a wonderful way at the time to learn how to program back before Python existed, but certainly just kind of a, a fun thing to do. And just, if you haven't seen the other videos, kind of what's happening here behind the scenes is we're doing a search of our embeddings with cosine similarity. We're then providing that as context and we concatenate together our initial prompt here of this is following his conversation with an AI assistant. We provide the context, which is the text up here. And then we provide the customer question, which is how the DaVinci model is then. I'm. It's possible, I, I guess, honestly, I haven't checked. It's possible that this text is somewhere in the DaVinci model, but I'm guessing it's not. And so without having to fine tune the model, we're giving it information about this document such that it can answer this um, in kind of an interesting way. And if you want to see that combined prompt, this is what it looks like. But this was just really a quick way to show you if you wanted to tackle some other language that wasn't covered in the first video where we were just focused on Markdown, this will give you how to go and convert from docx and get that into embeddings and the PyPan doc allows you to convert all sorts of different file types. So certainly you could change this and with little modification of this, you should actually be able to get a number of other file types that weren't covered from the last video. Hopefully this is helpful. Again, if you like these videos, please do add a like because it helps let me know that there's actually some interest because this is just something I do in my spare time. Thank you so much for watching.